Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, and fishing needs, go to eastport.info. Now let's get this show started. What just happened to our <laughs> intro? I don't know. It just like it kind of threw me off. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> what right, mic well, are that was you weird. using? Well, since this is an iCast episode, I'm going to get the mic out like everybody at iCast did. So I'm using a mic. Hey, guys, what's up? I mean, I'm also using a mic. It's just not the si- whatever you do. You you gotta have the handheld you. mic like this, man, because it's it makes you more official. I mean, I can just unscrew that and just hold it. That's what I'm gonna do too next year. I'm not gonna buy another mic. I'm just gonna unscrew this, run a USB <laughs> like through my shirt, and then have my laptop oh. like, attached and just hold it. You should somehow connect thing to like a hat and have it hang in front of your face, dude. I'm doing that. I'm do I'm doing that next year at iCast. I'm doing everyone. I'm going next year with the paddle and fin crew or the bona fide guys. And I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna put this blue mic, blue yeti mic over my shoulder on the boom attached to a backpack or something. See, I would like to go, but I really don't want to spend my vacation time going there. I uh, I wasn't probably gonna do vacation time anyway. I was probably just gonna do well, maybe I don't know, two or three days. Instead of like a whole week, yeah, because we could we could drive down in a day. I've done it before; it sucks, but we could do it. We got to iCast the next day, and then it starts on a Tuesday and... usually. I think. <clears throat> yeah, go down there like I don't know Monday, stay all day Tuesday, go Wednesday morning, and then leave Wednesday afternoon and get back Thursday night or Wednesday night Thursday morning. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> As of right yeah. now, I'm just like, whatever. I can see everything on a computer. <laughs> so I don't really care. That's very true. I mean, you're not wrong. But guys, this week, this is the episode that we've been telling you about that uh, is the full iCast recap. Uh, so let's see. we're going to go over some baits that, not baits, just fishing things in general that, you know, we liked. We saw that interested us, not necessarily something that we like think is amazing or anything because we obviously haven't seen anything in the flesh yet, but um, some of the things that really jumped out. Uh, <clears throat> really good show in the next couple of weeks. I mean, we've got some good shows lined up um, to bring you all these baits to the foreground. But, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Brad, how are you doing this week? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. How you doing? I'm just going to come to your house and beat you to death. Well, I'm feeling kind of country because we listened to a couple country songs before we started. So that's he's it's, I, it's like pop. I don't It's uh, like uh, 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 I don't know when they say something's fake. Like he's not. There's no way he's country. He just has yeah. a southern accent and sings stupid songs. But yeah, they're funny, as Allie yeah. pointed out when she didn't they're think that I could hear her. But uh, uh, I'm doing good. I don't know. I've been like on and off like the last two weeks. I've been sick. Just random. Yeah, that's weird, man. I don't know. That Maybe is I'm weird. Gone. You're always sick, though. Ever since I've known you. That's true. I'm, I've got the, the death bug or something. But <laughs> it is what it is. And I'll push forward like I always do. All right, dude. Uh, let's get started, man. We got a whole list of stuff we want to talk about from that we saw come out a couple days before iCast and down at iCast. So... Oh yeah, Maybe you just want to start at the list. top of the list and just go through it. And I mean, we can that shared note we had. You cleaned it up real nice, so it looks. Yeah, super before 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 like my my head was like, this is stupid. Yeah, I was gonna say so. Me and everyone, me and Brad have a uh, we had an iCast note that we were sharing between our phones. Every time we saw something, we'd add it to it that we want to talk about or something that was new or. Something along those lines. So you can imagine, even by Tuesday night, it was just stuff randomly as we saw stuff or watched videos. It was just all in there. So Brad's OCD got the better of him, and he structured it real nice and 
and fluid. So yeah, you added way more stuff than I did, but like, dude, you, I was on top of it. You kept up with the baits and stuff. I was, I don't know. I'm not real big. I don't know the bait thing. It's just like, yeah, whatever. You're I'll very set in your kayak. ways and what you use. So it's the bait things. I'm not super surprised that was the case, but uh, I will give a shout, shout out uh, to Cam Daniel. He was on our show about JDM stuff and how to get it in the U.S. He helped out. He was uh, everything I wasn't seeing, he was seeing. So, Cam, you're listening. Shout out to you. Uh, you still flipped your kayak at Dale Hollow and lost your stuff, so you're still a nerd, <laughs> but, you know, I appreciate it. Cam it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new phrase, Cam it. Uh, all right, let's start. Uh, Let's start at the top because I know we're going to go through new product showcase and stuff too, but there's two things that stuck out to me huge on the kayak scene for kayaks. Yeah. The feel free airship yeah. and the bona fide RVR. Yeah. The airships, it, it, it's interesting because it. I think it's an inflatable, right? Yeah. It's an inflatable from looking at it. Now, granted, I mean, there wasn't. Wasn't like I watched a video on uh, Mr. John Rapp's page when he shared it. Yep. Um, it's an inflatable, but it looks like it has a body on it, like a hard body. Um, yeah, which it's super interesting because it's still going to be super packable. Um, just like your mom, and just <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's going to be super packable, and it it offers a lot of features that you probably wouldn't normally see on an inflatable kayak, like the seat. Uh, the type of pedal drive, you know, a bunch of different stuff. I was about to say, Here hopefully you're pulling it up. Yep. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like, I, I first saw it, I was like, that is an inflatable, I'm pretty sure. But then it, the whole bottom is like a plastic shell or something, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The whole bottom That's is a so plastic weird. shell. Which is, it is weird. Um, And it's weird enough where, like, I want to see it in person so I can mess with it. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to too. And, but and yeah, like, like the that pedal drive in the middle looks weird too. Like the hole for it. Yeah, the whole the pedal drive system and where the seats at. Like you would think for an inflatable boat, it 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 seems like there's a ton going on because there's a lot of features for the boat. Because I know like on the sides you have dry storage and those gray containers mm -hmm. next to the seat, which is cool. Um, or a place to put your small mouth if you're going to take them home and eat them. <laughs> live well baby oh lord i mean i'm sure someone's gonna turn that into a live well that could be something yeah. for guys who if they're taking this out you know and they're using live bait they could i mean i'm sure that would be a great idea for feel free if uh, anyone from there are uh, listening make it a live well option that would be a good idea um but it's got a lot of features and it's it's the, yeah i mean that pedal drive system how it sits in the boat what's around it i really want to see it because that's like super interesting to me yeah it, it, it's like sleek looking it looks simple uh, like most inflatables are anyway so i mean you're not really putting much on them that's the point of them yeah i'm about to say the point of it is to be a little bit more movable move friendly to where you're not having to pack a lot of stuff it's supposed to be super you know packable I guess is yeah. a great way to say it. Um, no, I got you. I, I really dig that shell on the bottom, though, especially for the river, just because, like, I had an inflatable. It bounces off rocks. But then, again, mm -hmm. there's spots in our river that has, like, rebar and metal sticking out of the ground. Yeah. Always, and you can't really see it when you're going over it. So it yeah, makes it kind of nice to have that plastic shell. Yeah, I must say that's it's the protective factors there. And I knew that when you were in your inflatable, your NRS, I knew – for a surefire fact because Hobie came out with one right after the links, not too long after that, maybe a little bit long. Uh, no, they've had, they've had one that. for a while. They had the I 11 S before that. And they came out with the I track 11 after the links, the I track. Yeah. Um, but I knew companies would start to see it. So it's, it's good that that, that section of the market starting to expand a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I really think there's a, there's a, a great, Set. it's not even a niche anymore it's like an actual group of kayakers who want something they can throw in their trunk go mm -hmm. to the lake and and to be there and be done yeah and it looks yeah. like looks like your uh 
traditional fr- fill free seat too. So a lot, of, I know a lot of people t- uh, talk highly about that seat. Being very oh, su- super comfortable. I've been in a, a couple of them. Very comfortable seat. Um, and that's what threw me too, because it's while it's an inflatable, it's got the like a full size kayak seat. Like you're not sacrificing comfort mm-hmm. for something that's going to be more portable. Um, which I know in some kayaks, the lighter it gets, they really they nitty gritty it down to the bones to make it as light as they can. You get a seat that's not super comfortable and things like that. And you're still getting this feel free seat that mm-hmm. is ergonomic, comfortable to sit in. Like, it's, I mean, it's a good seat. So, and it looks like it sits high, which is nice. Mm-hmm. So yep. when I had and my the- NRS uh, inflatable, I had to put um, yoga blocks underneath it to raise it up like four or five inches. And then at, at that point it was perfect. Like I was comfortable on that thing. Yeah, I was about to say, this already comes, you know, with a little bit higher seat. Now, granted, from pictures, I'm not sure how high it sits, if it's still a lower position, which I would assume it would be. Um, But they kind of hit it good with the pedal drive system because with that seat, it's still kind of putting you at a little backwards angle, Mm -hmm. which is what you want for a pedal drive. So you can get, you know, the hips to where your pedals are. You want them to almost not almost be in line but be a little bit behind just so it's more comfortable paddle pedaling over time so i mean i think you know without being in the boat and just taking it for first impressions i think they did a good job in, uh, coming to the inflatable market yeah i think so too i'm interested to see it so i think the inflatable thing is going to take off here soon i really think it will too um which is not a bad thing just like we talk when we have john from yet gadget on you know the more yeah. companies make stuff the more available it becomes, the cheaper it becomes, so more people can get their hands on it. You, are you seeing this little eight ball thing right here on the seat? Yeah, so that eight ball thing, that's the rudder. Um, oh, they do that's that. kind of cool. <laughs> the eight ball is pretty much standard on their feel freeze, the big fish, because big fish is owned by feel free. Um, and then in their 103 and 108, which are their pedal kayaks. I didn't kayaks. know that. That's cool. Yep, they come with an eight ball rudder control. And the rudder control is actually, it's, it's fairly sturdy because it comes kind of off that it's not your standard just little paddle that you move yeah. back and forth. i mean it comes off and you can get your whole hand around it really feel like you're in control which is nice that's so. cool sweet man well that was the first kayak we talked about or we we saw before i can say started i'm gonna say uh, that was the first thing we saw period when it came to yeah. icast other than z-man released a couple baits you know in the week or so up but big stuff that kayak came i think it was on sunday night yeah, Sunday or Monday or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. So, uh, dude, the next kayak, man, I know you're pumped about this. I'm super pumped about it, and I've already got it ready to to share. Uh, it's the Bonafide RVR 119. So, uh, let me pull it up. They got a picture up now. No, but you know another website does. Oh, okay. So this is it completely kitted out, which. You know, I'm I'm super pumped for this for the single fact that, you know, they're coming into the how they explain it, right? So in in the video, Chad did a video with uh, uh, Hans. Oh, my brains, yeah, Hans, my brain was working. Um, did a video with Hans talking about it, and this kayak is completely designed for the whole river journey, not just being on the river. You know, because the the RS is a great river kayak. The I mean, I was in that for a year and a half. It was great, great boat. Um, you know, the SS 107, I've had that on the river works fine. Um, I know you've had the SS 127 out on the river a mm-hmm. lot, you know, it, it holds its own, but this boat completely designed around this is everything and anything river. So fast moving water, getting your boat, portaging your boat, um, how everything sits, how everything packs. Uh, I'm super pumped for this boat because it hits that sweet spot of 12 foot. I will say there's a few features that we've seen on another boat that was released not too long ago. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kind of curious if they added some of those after that boat came out. Cause they may have. And yeah. I, I know it's not a big deal. That. No, yeah. not at all. I mean, it's innovation. Innovation is a good thing. Uh, it, it forces other people to think outside the box. And I think we talked about that. We would see some co- some companies start making boats that have those features because it was how innovative they were. Um, but yeah, there's not a whole lot of info on the kayak yet. As in, you know, we have these top down pictures and then we have a, uh, let's see, is there that side picture on here? We have the side picture 
which they're explaining it's it's a hundred percent redesigned hybrid catamaran hull. So we'll see how that hull looks. They've designed it to you know hit be used in fast moving water and current. So we'll you know I I'm already gonna tell you I'm probably gonna get the boat just how it goes. Um and it's gonna be the new river machine and then here shortly we'll have someone from Bonafide on the actual podcast to talk about it. But I'm super pumped. Some of the features they have on this, you know, they talked about the integrated uh, anchor wizard, the anchor crank. Yeah, that's interesting. It does that. Does the line run through the hole and come out the front? It does. So if you see it right here, it lines goes right through the hole there mm-hmm. and comes out to the front up here, which is awesome because there's line management, which is a great option to have. Yeah. Cause usually you have to put them, put like a uh, yak attack eyelets in the gear track and like, you know, yeah. Snake Either your line, snake your you line to wherever you want it to go. It also has, mm-hmm. they explained it, it goes to the rear too. So if you want to use an anchor chain, you can, mm-hmm. um, Oh, it does it on both sides. Yep. Okay. Yep. You can put it on both sides. So over here is where it goes to the rear. Okay. And then it pops out right there, which you can kind of see it. Um, it's typical bona fide, which is a great thing. They still left your rear motor mounts um, or your your that standard four screw power mm-hmm. pull mount to where everything pretty much uses now. Um, and that and that hole in the back to where you can get inside. That's big. Yep. You have your access hole in the back, which is awesome, which is, when it comes to installing stuff is great. Um, it's designed around the Torquedo for motor, but I mean, the new port would work fine, but it has a cutout right here for your uh your uh uh controller so for speed and everything along those lines are right there which is awesome that's built into the boat um you still have your dry storage up here which is the only thing with the p127 that i miss yeah is having that that pod in front of me Um, uh which you know as a river boat when i'm sitting here looking at this I love the dry pod on the 127, but with this being a river boat, I would kind of like that without the dry pod there. Yeah, to have a completely open deck concept. I can see that yeah. too. I personally like having a dry pod because that's especially for quick river trips. Like when we meet up, you know, on Thursdays or Tuesdays or whatever day of the week it is to go hit the river for a couple hours after we get off work. I like to be able to throw my keys in there, my wallet in there just basic stuff just throw it in there i'm not using it for now could you do a fish finder there for sure oh, yeah. I, th- I i think it would with how and again we don't have a lot of info yet but with how the rods are shown in this picture do i think it would get in the way of the cor- the way it was designed to transport the rods maybe yeah. i'm not sure you have to see but you know this is i like having a dry pod that's just me because i like throwing my crap in there so if I fall in or something stupid, or if I flip the boat, they're all going to be protected. Yeah. Now I, I use, so when I had the 127, I would put my battery inside of it and I'd mount the fish finder on it. Just like everybody mm-hmm. else does that has a bonafide. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's cool though. I, I do like the open deck concept. And uh, what's that thing on the front of the bow? Like I know there's a strap there. What's right above the strap. Are you talking about right here? Yeah. I'm not sure. I was thinking that too. It almost looks like another accessory port to where you get to the front of the bow. You know what would be cool is if they put like the Sholey has like the rod locker, except put mm-hmm. tubes so where you could slide your rods inside of it. That would be dope. And I know from this strap here, you can see the rods are probably resting on it, but I don't know what they're going to go into fact of if, if that's kind of like the surely where it has the velcro to where you can strap your rods down or yeah. that might that i think that looks like somewhere you put like a backpack or something strap it down yeah probably i mean you're probably not wrong but yeah that idea from putting the tubes there would be awesome or if it's a front accessory plate i'm cool with that too um yeah because with not like at the rs when i was putting the motor on the front of that now granted a little bit different i don't think people are well i'm sure someone's gonna mount an xi3 to the front of this but um not having a front accessory port kind of sucked. Not really, because we just drilled a one-inch hole and called it a day anyway. But it would be nice just to have it there so you're drilling in the accessory hole or uh, port and not the actual boat. So, 
uh, overall, it's pretty cool, man. I think uh, I think bonafide owners are really going to love that catchboard recess. I mean, like I've said plenty of times, it's awesome on the Sholey. Yeah, that is one. That's one feature I love because I mean, just like everything else, sometimes getting your catchboard in the right spot and moving around other things can get in the way or be annoying. So, but the thing is, it looks like it's like above the floor a couple inches. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would agree, and that might just be how the picture's looking to where maybe that's it's designed to have. I, I mean, I don't know. I think it is on either side because you have that that kind of RS or uh, yeah, the RS center track right there. Yep. So oh, it yeah. might be just sitting on that center track where that's at, unless that center track's flush with the the hole, and it's you know just how the picture is. Yep. Um, we'll get more information as it goes on, and like I said, we're gonna have. Uh, Sony from Bonafide on to talk about the boat, which is going to be a great show. But yeah, that's if anything else in ICAST, that's the thing I'm most excited about. Like, I'm pumped about that boat. Yeah, I think that was the coolest thing I saw too. Um, we got a couple more kayaks here to talk about, and we Hobie actually came out with one, which they did. I thought was really cool because it's a Hobie pedal drive under two thousand dollars, which is going to be insane for the market. Um, I mean, the Hobie Mirage Passport Series R. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're getting ready to pull it up. Yeah, I'm trying to. If I can... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, it's it's not real different from the other. Well, I mean, it, I think it's completely rotomolded. molded The other Hobie Passport was two-piece, kind of like a Pelican. Yes, it was two-piece where this is completely rotomolded. molded The big thing that I think no matter what it is, if it was completely rolling motored or a two piece is that it's like you said, it's a pedal drive kayak under two grand, yep. which is insane. Yeah. So, but I mean, there's not much like, there's not much we can talk about because I mean, it's basically the same design that they've been using. It's just road motored and better than the last passport. 1869. Yep. Yep. It comes with the kick up fins. I mean, this Which could be a, a they they that was a good idea on their part because you got other pedal drives on the market like the lightning and stuff coming out. And yep, bringing this out and having the Hobie name, it's going to be like no brainer. They're going to get a Hobie. They're not going to get a lightning. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean they're good, especially at the price point. Uh, why would I? Because I mean Hobies are, you know, they're they're synonymous with bona fide old town like good quality kayaks. Mm -hmm. Um. So if I can get one at that price, why would I get a name that is known, but not as known? You know what I mean? So I can completely yep. see that. Um, but it's coming out in a 10 footer and a 12 footer. Is the 10 footer cheaper? I believe so. Yes. I didn't even, uh, I didn't even see the 10 footer. I just saw a 12. Yeah. It's a, it's a real basic pedal drive, but still, like I said, basic pedal, basic Kobe pedal drives, uh, very nice. Yeah, the 10.5R is the other version that's at 1649. Oh, see, that's man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's going nice. to be hard to for any company who's making an inexpensive kayak to like or not inexpensive, but a, a pedal drive under 2 grand. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard for them to compete, I believe, with Hobies. Um, yep. Now, depending on what brand, like every brand is known, like the Hobie drives are known for, you know, Hobie in itself is known for a nice kayak. It's just always been super expensive. Then you have Bonafide's known for stability. Mm -hmm. um, so with that RVR, I'm sure they're going to bring a stability aspect to it that some river boats don't have. Um, mm -hmm. It's like the Sholey. I love the Sholey paddling. It was great. Uh, it's a little tippy, which you even said that. Um, it likes to rock back and forth a little bit. But, yeah. you know, so if that RBR comes but, out with bona fide stability. That's again, what makes the Sholey perform the way it does, though. Is exactly, the rock, yeah. The rocker mean, on it. Yep. So it doesn't have those hard, uh, hard well, edges you, to catch water. You even so. got a picture of me standing on my seat. Mm -hmm. I had no issues with that. So. Oh, I'm not saying it's not stable. I'm just saying, you know. It's not bona fide it, stable. Exactly. And that's what bona fide is known for is the stability of their kayaks, you know. They're they're some of the most stable kayaks on the market. Period. 
Um, so if they bring the most that stable that, one I've been on. Yeah. So it's the same thing when it comes to Hobie. If they, you know, when you look at a Hobie for 1849 for a 12 foot pedal drive, it's got the Hobie Mirage drive, which is a tried and true drive with the kick up kick up fins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. And my, if you're in that price point for a uh, kayak, it's still a passport. Like you said, they haven't really changed the design of it a whole lot for this new boat, other than it's a rotomotor bolt and boat instead of a two piece. But man, it's got a, that sub two thousand dollar pedal drive market's gonna be flooded with Hobie passport ours. Yep. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's much else we can talk about that, but it, it's whatever. Uh, did you happen to see the uh, boat inflatable? I the- did. I saw it kind of not in passing. Um, it wasn't a great video of it, but I saw some of the talks of it. Um. It's like a is, pedal drive paddle board almost. Yeah. Which I mean boats boats known they've had inflatable boats for a long time. They're known in the inshore mm-hmm. community pretty big. Um I haven't seen I'm trying to find let's see. It's on their Facebook. I can't find it on Google. There I've I've pulled it up from I, I don't know, it's a video. Um, that does me no good unless this. Oh no, it's not a video. Okay, let's do this. Ba 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 ba. Drum roll. Yeah. So this is another inflatable kayak. Boats known for their inflatable, or it's an inflatable subboard kayak. Zoom in hybrid. Yeah. That looks interesting too because it looks like there's some plastic components on that as well. Mm-hmm. I it, would it's agree. Like paddle, I w- it's like a paddle slash old canoe hybrid or not canoe, old kayak hybrid. Like the front looks like an old kayak sit in. Yeah, I'm about to say the front looks like a sit in kayak. Whether it looks like, like I said, a kayak sup board hybrid. Like you can stand on that and paddle it, which like a sup board if you wanted to, or mm-hmm. you can sit down in the seat and pedal it. Which is cool that I don't know if that if they've ever had a pedal drive out on the market, so I don't know because I don't follow boat very you know closely, so I'm not sure. Like I said, it's more of an inshore thing, but again, it's kind of going back to when we were talking about the feel free airship. It's more companies or boats been doing this for a long time, but they've kind of probably seen the ex- success of other inflatables to where they're bringing this to where they're aiming it as you know an inshore and freshwater option. So. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I, I saw a video that guy named Alex that's on YouTube. He um, he tried one out while he was down at ICAST, and it was making a weird noise at first. And he was like, "I don't like that." And he's like, "Wait a second, this actually pedals pretty good." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks like a. It's probably I don't know. Again, not without actually being in there knowing. And I'm sure if I read through this, I'd be able to find it. Um, but I don't know if it's a chain driven system. If it's you know. Yeah, what kind of system either. it is. I would assume it is from looking at the pictures of it that it's a chain system. Um, but it's it's going to be marketed as a SUP board, um, a fishing SUP that you can sit down and pedal, which is cool. I'm sure the inshore guys will love it. I am I doubt we'll see it very often up here because I don't know if anyone sells boats up here. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever seen one in a shop. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I have somewhere, but regardless i think you know it's just like i said about anything else about feel free and other companies the the kayak market is welcoming the inflatables now where a lot of guys at first were like oh they're terrible oh i'm good you know, the thing would get popped and then now it's like oh yeah let's all make one we all love them so <laughs> yeah it's funny man but it's whatever mm-hmm. um let's see next here oh we the next two things man they're all you so you want to talk all about right, them. I'll talk about them. Yep. So the next few things, um, those were the kayaks. I know I didn't. We'll we'll cover it another show because you and me got to talk about it. But NRS brought out their new kayaks, which we kind of already knew about just from being with the shop. Yeah, and whatnot, it, it's basically out. the same thing. They just rebranded and they own Star, so they branded it NRS. Kudos. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, so the next two things, just because bonafide. Uh, 
Bonafide jumped in feet first, made a huge splash with their, they're coming out with fishing rods. They're called the boss rods. Um, they are going to jump into the premium fishing rod market. And as someone who's had a ton of premium fishing rods, I'm super excited to try them out. Um, they're going to have an MSRP of three seventy nine ninety nine, which it's, it's, it's expensive and it's steep, but if they're jumping into the market with other premium performance fishing rods, it's actually, they're competitively priced because you're looking at mega bash rods. If they're in the same genre, because again, I haven't messed with them yet. Um, you know, or 400 plus for that quality of rod St. Croix up there too, with their legend elites. Mm -hmm. Um, but these rods are built just like you or built like Bonafide loves to do it. They're made in the United States of America, which is hard to find in a rod. Um, See, that that's why I asked you if they're rain shadow blanks, because I think that's one of the only blanks that's made here. I, I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I mean, unless, and again, we don't have a whole lot of info yet. And when we have uh, the person from Bonafide on to talk about the RVR, I'm sure we'll have them on again to talk about the Bosch rods because those are coming a lot quicker than the RVR is. Um, give me one second. Yeah, Got to do some work. Um, but yeah, I'm super pumped for these rods. As a Douglas guy, I'm still obviously, it's. I think it's going to be hard to beat Douglas. They're some of the best rods I've ever touched in my life, period. But I think these rods, you know, built in the United States, um, EVA rod uh, grips, which are nice. There's carbon fiber inlaid on the blank of the butt section. Um, they Fuji do guys, the I think I Fuji, saw you. yep, Fuji guys. They do the Fuji hook keeper, mm -hmm. which is the type that comes strapped on the rod itself, so you can move that depending on where yeah. you like to have it, which is nice. You're not stuck in one section, and they're gonna have what we were talking about. I wanted to make sure I was right when I said this. Six cast two spinning. Eight casting, two spinning. So they're going to have 10 rods total. Mm -hmm. And, and they're they, all specific too, aren't they? They are. They're, they're technique specific, um, which their new Boss Bass series, it's know what to throw, as you see right here. That's kind of the mantra they're going off with these rods. So they're going to have a worm rod, frog rod, swim bait rod, chatterbait rod, square bait, crank bait, swim jig, spinner bait for all the casting. Um which all come with, you know, technique specific actions, technique specific powers, lengths, lure ratings, um, which is lure rating for the worm rod is zero to three fourth ounces. So that means it could throw huh. whatever you want. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd like to know what the bottom end is, but at the same time, I'm sure I'll be able to test it out. Um, and then the two spinning is going to be worm and Ned rig. So. Yeah, that's Sounds about right. They got everything covered pretty much. Yeah, more or less. And some of these rods obviously will be used as dual purpose. Like the Ned Rig rod will be a good drop shot rod or the yeah. worm rod, excuse me. Um, no medium lights, but some guys I know are going to Ned Rigs on a medium rod instead of a medium light because they like having a little bit more backbone, which is fine. Yeah, I, I think I want to try doing that just because. Like I told you, I don't like the Ned locks on a medium light rod because they just don't set very well. Yeah, and I found that out um, when I started using them. They did not like to. You can, it's hard to set the hook because you don't have a lot of backbone to get through the plastic. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see how they go. Uh, another big thing with these that you know, as far as I'm aware, they have. There's only two other companies I know, Douglas and St. Croix for some of their higher ends, but it has a limited lifetime warranty. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's a, what is it? Uh, so if it's a factory defect, they'll replace it. New rod, same comparable model at no charge. And then if you break it or if you, you know, do whatever you break it, whatever it is, they'll give you a brand new rod for 175. So half the price. Little, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much half the price for a new rod which if you really like the rods and they're as performance as they say they will be, that's not a huge deal <clears throat> for replacing it. So if you snap a rod 12 years later for 175 bucks, they'll get you the comparable model. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I'm excited for it. It's just showing that Bonafide is kind of reaching out. They're really going to their unlimited or ultimate fishability mantra with their boats to where they're jumping into the rod scene. Um, another thing that I know you and me are both 
super pumped about are their new fishing bags. Yes, dude. I want I want one. I want to know more about it too, because there's not much info on these yet. <clears throat> that freaking so got- that bit uh the the seat smaller bag. one. Yeah, the seat bag. That's what I want. Uh yeah, the seat bag, and this is new because I mean I haven't looked at the website in mm, I don't know three or four days. They didn't have pricing on now they do. So the main backpack is $139.99 and then the seat bag is going to be $89.99 and these seat bags were designed to go to work with bona fide kayaks or any kayak seat from looking at them because it's got the clips yep. um and clips on the sides and the top cup holder in there and you're you're not wrong there's not a whole lot of info out on them yet which i'm i want to see more about it because i'm super pumped about these bags because that's one thing i think will be dope to have this style bag with zippers and pockets and things like that Mm -hmm. um on the back of the boat it'll make river trips easier because you can just throw it in there and call it a day um yeah you can you could take it off your seat and if you're wade fishing take it off your seat and throw it over your shoulder like a messenger bag exactly like it's it gives you multiple options to use the bag which is cool and that backpack looks sick like i'll probably end up getting the backpack just to be my main backpack because it looks dope it does Um, look sweet yeah so they're really branching out from their standard Hey, we are a kayak boat company to, Hey, we're a kayak boat company that also cares about what we say, the ultimate fishability of our boats. So we're giving you other accessories to work with the boats. Um, I just, I just hope it doesn't affect like the quality of some of their other products. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I can see that. I mean, it's kind of like the, you know, uh, what's the word I was thinking of, you know, spreading yourself too thin as a company. Yeah. Um, to where they're focusing on because the premium fishing rod market isn't anything to scoff at like that takes time dedication work to get into it build a product that is worth the 379 dollar price tag um and actually use it you know to continue to because they can't just make it and leave the rods alone for years mm-hmm. you know they have to improve on the rods over time um the fishing bag market I think they're, they're going to have to like with these, cause we don't know a whole lot with them yet. Obviously they attach the back of their, of the boats and it's going to be, that's probably going to be one of the main selling features of them. Um, but the fishing bag market so saturated with bags and stuff yeah. that there's going to have to be some pretty innovative with it, which attaching the back of a kayak seat is pretty, pretty dope. Um, I don't know of any other bags that do that to this extent. Now, yeah, gadget makes a bag, that goes in the back of the seat, which is good for, you know, 3,700 boxes or some plastics or some little things. It's, it's there and it, it does its job and it's a good bag. Um, mm-hmm. But this has, you know, multiple pockets, things along those lines. One thing that will suck is if it doesn't fit a full size 3,700 box, I might be a little upset, but I'm sure it will. Yeah. yeah. It'd be kind of stupid if it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's the width of the seat, so it shouldn't be a big issue. But we'll see. I'm just pumped to get them. I think it's going to be a nice addition. I'm pumped to learn more about them just because there's not a whole lot released yet. Um, yep. And both the Bosch rods and these bags are releasing this fall. Um, so we should start seeing a lot more about them. And like I said, we're going to have someone from Bonafide on to give us all the dirty details about both. Um, and really dive deep into them. So, Heck yeah, man. I'm excited. <laughs> Uh, so next thing, well, yeah, we're done with kayak related stuff. I think, um, we got Shimano next, which they really didn't have much. Like they didn't have a big release year. I mean, no, they didn't. They did. They kind of like, th- they won a best in show for freshwater reels with the Stella yeah. FL, um, which, which came out last year, right? The Stella has been out for a little while, but I thought it... the FL came out last year and then they revisited it and did it this year um because there's old stellas you can get from back in the day uh but it was typically a saltwater reel um so they came out the stella they did come the stella the stella they (laughs) did come out with uh the so the two things that i think are from the fishing rod and reel market because it's shimano um they came out with the maravel maravil yeah i want to see that one maravil Uh, the know. Marivel, that's what it is. Marivel, that's exactly what it is. Um, let me pull it up. So what's awesome about this is, let's see, I searched it during, there it is, Hot Dog. They actually have it on their website. <laughs> they don't mess around, man. You ain't wrong. Um, 
everyone else is taking their sweet time to get stuff on the website. But is there a price on that yet? There is one thirty nine. Oh, that's not bad. I thought it was going to be a little bit more expensive. No, and what everything it has on it is what's awesome about it because it has the CI four body. Let's see if it lets me. Huh. So it's got the CI four body. Uh, it's it's pretty much if you think about it, it's kind of the. I don't want to say watered down because I don't I don't really think it is. I think, but if it's kind of like a, a the younger brother to the Stratic. Yeah, I can because, see that. You know the the CI four the Stratic CI four went away and it became the Vanford, yeah. and now you have the Maravil whatever Maravil come out at one hundred and thirty nine dollar price point, which is awesome because most Shimano reels that are super nice and have the CI four body, things like that are 200 plus or one ninety nine or whatever. Um, so it fits that price point really good. It's a great, not only would it be a great, Hey, I'm getting into fishing and I want to get a new spin rod or reel. You can get that or, Hey, I've been in fishing and I want something else to bolster my arsenal. You can also get it. It fits that price point. It's right in that you happy know, medium. I, I might get rid of my NAS, NASCI and get one of these. It would be a good upgrade because yeah, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Like a NASCI was either eighty nine ninety nine or ninety nine ninety nine hundred dollar mm-hmm. reel. So upgrading to this, it's easier to spend an extra forty bucks instead of an extra hundred and ten or hundred and twenty for a CI four Stratic or a Vanford is now. Yeah, it, it looks like it's. I can't. The, the body looks kind of aluminum, like half aluminum, half plastic, maybe. Yeah, I mean it's. Let's see. Because I know the NASCI body is like, it's not aluminum at all. Let's see. Da, da, da. CI4 body, lightweight platform, increased sensitivity. Yeah. Magnum light rotor, which is nice. Um, Cold Forge gears, which is really nice. Silent drive and X ship. Those are in some of their higher price stuff, which is mm-hmm. awesome. It doesn't say what the body's made out of. Um, I'm sure someone's got to rip into the podcast and be like, oh, it's made out of this. And they said, well, I didn't see it. So it sucks to suck. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm excited for it. I think it hits a niche in the market from Shimano that they haven't really, because the Nasky's not a bad reel and the yeah. Sahara, which is the step down, isn't a bad reel. But to get that quality of Stratic, you were always spending $200. Yeah, now, there's you, nothing. There's nothing there's in between that bridges. Exactly. There's nothing yeah. that bridges. So it, it fills that gap really nice. That I think you can get a uh, get one of these, and then when you're done with it, you want to upgrade. It's not that big of a deal to upgrade 50, 60 bucks to a Stratic because you already had a hundred and forty dollar yeah. reel. Now you can go to a Stratic, or you know, make the big jump to a Vanford or some of their nicer stuff. Um, but like, so they had that. They did a, a, a refresh on the Shimano uh, SLX rods, which. Mm-hmm. They kind of change it from the look at the change color. They change the blank. It's a different type. It's the same style of blank. It just has different tolerances, which is nice because the SLX rods I've used them. They're okay. I've never even seen one. They they weren't great. I mean they were they were an, oh, they were a, a good hundred dollar option because that's where they were at. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've changed them to where they're still keeping that price point. They're going to be a little bit nicer of a rod, so that's cool. Um, they came out with the Corrado DC two hundred size. So yeah, so they they pumped that up. They pumped it up, and uh, I, I got to looking at it. I didn't realize that they didn't make anything over a 150 or 151 for the Corrado DC. Yeah, the Corrado DC is always stuck at that 150. Uh, they had the like the Corrado K went up to a two and 300. Yeah, um, but I, I agree because they were releasing those teasers and stuff, and it was like, oh yeah, you know, a new DC, a new Corrado DC is coming. Mm-hmm. It, it's 200. So it's a bigger reel. It's just a bigger wanna, size. That's it. <laughs> that's all it is. Which, I mean, for some people, as someone who's had, had Tranks and Scorpion Monster Drives and stuff like that, like I, I understand the big reel. It, it, there's certain things that it excels at throwing, having more lines, great. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's cool, but it, it got a lot more hype than it needed to, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's as a Shimano fanboy. Like I'm just saying, I think they they overdid that one a little bit. Um, so that's just my two cents. I it's, no, it's I a agree. Corrado DC, so it's going to be a good reel regardless. I mean, they're great reels, so it's going to perform well. And it's, you have a 
glide baits, popper, and a swaggy strong spinner bait. That yep. they released so, too. Yeah, so a lot of people you don't see Shimano baits very often in a lot of places. Um, they have a huge bait selection over in Japan. Um, but they're releasing a couple new baits here, which let's see if I can find da, 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 da. if I can find uh the new stuff that they released from iCast. So they have this share, share screen. I don't know uh, why it keeps some of these baits aren't new though, they're just redesigned, aren't they? So, like the arm joint is new, the flash boost, which in here this ha has a little thing that when you're moving it, it's a little almost like uh, I think like a spinner bait. It's not a piece of glass or anything, but when it moves, it moves back and forth, and the light yeah. catches it, and puts a flash, which is the flash boost technology. Like a jerk bait they came out with last year. Yep, it's the okay. same concept. Gotcha. So the arm joint is a uh, three segmented uh, glide bait. <laughs> The middle segment right here articulates pretty much almost past 90 degrees. It is past 90 degrees. And the back one articulates just a little bit. So, like, for someone like me who I don't like throwing three-jointed baits very often, I'd be fine to throw this because that back joint doesn't move a whole lot. Um, and because Shimano's name's on it. Not true. I don't have <laughs> – I, I don't think I have one Shimano lure in all of my stuff, and I've got a ton huh. of lures. Um, I've never been – not necessarily not a huge fan, but other companies that I get like JDM stuff make something either comparable or uh, the same category. And I've, I've bought from them. I've never really been a Shimano bait guy just because I've always been the mega bass bait guy for JDM stuff, mega bass. Um, now I take that back because technically Shimano owns Jackal. So mm. Jackal is, I, I fish a lot of their stuff. Um, this was the next thing they came out, which it's, They've had this popper, but this has that flash boost in it as well. Yep. So I think yeah, that actually cool. would be cool concept. I think that's going to yeah. be better than the glide bait with the flash thing. Um, because it's going to help fish coming up from underneath key on the bait because they're seeing the glint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that's going to be better. Um, and then the swaggy strong spinner bait. Let's see if I can find that, which I probably won't be able to. Um, oh. I mean, it's just the spinner bait. You, there's only so much you could do with those. Pretty much, yeah. That's I'm not even gonna look at it because it's that's pretty much <laughs> it. It's just a, it's just a spinner bait. Um, it does look good, uh, and they're bringing out some more key colors because they've had it in Japan for a little while. So they're bringing it out here with some core colors, which are nice. Um, your chartreuses, your bluegills, things like that. So, I mean, I think it's gonna do well. Uh, when it comes to the bait market, I personally believe, and this is just me in the U S Shimano doesn't care as much as they do with their rods and reels. Yeah. And G, G Loomis. And then the Shimano reels. Um, that's their bread and butter here in the U S when it comes to baits, Japan, they have a huge following just here. It's just not as big, but they haven't had put a ton of time into it. So I can see that. Um, so yeah, I mean, they brought out some good stuff. I think Shimano was overhyped this year, even with the Maravel coming out. Um, yeah. They just didn't bring a whole lot to iCast, which isn't a big deal. I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't want something new every year because then you're just pumping out stuff just because. Yeah, and Shimano is they're they've never been the one to be like, oh, we have to bring it out of iCast. They'll just release something in December. Yeah, you're like all right, and yeah, new reels out. And which I like, I like ah. that, man. Like, I, I it's kind of annoying that companies wait until the week of in July. Yeah, I agree. Um, and going in the next group, because now I've tried to find some pictures of this stuff and I just, I don't know, maybe I just, I'm stupid and can't find it. But companies that wait to like Strike King, they brought out, in my opinion, I like almost everything they brought out. Um, minus one, just because I don't, I don't fish that style of bait very often. Um, but they brought out what, one, two, three, four, five new plastics. Mm -hmm. And they're all something I want to fish and I want it them now. Half of them are, have rattles in them now, don't they? Or something? So you you have... Well, the Rattling Rage does, mm -hmm. which all this is on their Instagram. They released them all there. Um, the Rattling Rage is their Rage Crawl with a rattle in it, which I think that it's a great jig trailer um, or, you know, it'd be good just by itself. It's designed, I believe, as a jig trailer. But like that, I've been interested in that because I like throwing Strike King Plastics. I'm a fan of them. Mm -hmm. Um 
The Strike King Filler Worm looks awesome. The Zeus Worm looks awesome. Um, those are both worm styles. The Zeus Worm is a bigger bodied worm where your filler worm is more of a finesse worm. Um, big fan of those. Um, the Rage Worm Menace. It's a worm with two little rage tails. Um, yeah. Little I, menace tails. I think that's the one that stood out to me too. Like, uh, It look kind of looks like the baby goat, I think. Kind of, but longer because it's it's a full size yeah. worm. Yeah, like I, a five, I, five inch worm or something. I love that because you can use that. You can whack your it gives you more, uh, more motion, and more action. You can just Texas rig it and bounce it, um, mm-hmm. and it give you that action. You know, I you could shaky head it. You can do everything with it. I'm pumped. Like I want that now. Why do you have to wait till <laughs> the second to last week of July to release it? That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I understand. Uh, this I uh, the scone bug. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right. Um. But that's uh, you know, a big fat, thick creature style bait, bug bait. Mm-hmm. Pump for that because that'd be a great Texas rig bait just to throw into some crap. Oh, um, yeah. it, I, I, even on the river, it's a bigger body, but I think it would do great because it would resemble a big old fat crawl. That so on the Tokyo rig, dude, it would I, it would hammer. It would just do work, and it's annoying that I have to wait so long to get stuff because they're I don't they're not even released yet. They they're gonna come out in the fall, yeah. which, I mean. I don't know. I wish they wouldn't wait so long. It bugs me. But I saw they came out with the Chick Magnet Junior, which the Chick Magnet came out last year, and they just what they make just a smaller version this year. Yeah, they made the junior version. The Chick Magnet came out last year. This this year they made the Chick Magnet Junior. Um man, it annoys me that I can't find any of this stuff in stores around here either. Like I've never seen the Chick Magnet in the store. No, neither have I. And it's even I've been a Bass Pro. No, I saw one at Bass Pro. I saw like, a there at Bass Pro. They have like the 1.0s and and like I can't find a Strike King square bill with a rattle. That's stupid. Yeah. Uh so I feel like it's the big reasons because they're most of these stores like Field and Stream, Cabela's is starting to get better at it. They were really good before they got bought out by Bass Pro. They're starting to get better at it. But places like that, they sell what sells and what's always sold. Yeah. They just keep rebuying the old stuff. They don't bring in new stuff very often, which sucks because that means for pretty much everything on that Strike King list that I'm looking at, we're gonna I'm gonna have to order all of it. Like, yeah, we're just hate, not gonna have it anywhere. I hate online sh- shopping because, like you know me, I'm a cheap guy, and if I'm gonna go shopping online, and I'm gonna want free shipping. I gotta spend like fifty or seventy five bucks to get the free shipping. And then I'm yeah. like, oh, I just spent 75 bucks. This sucks. Yeah, I mean, and, and you'll you go when, into it when I only wanted like two baits in the beginning. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah, exactly. You go into it wanting to spend maybe 10 to 11 bucks yeah. where you spend 10, to 11 bucks, you have to pay $30 or $15 in shipping. Or if you spend 50 bucks, you don't have to pay for shipping. So now, I mean, it went from 10 or 11 to 50, 50 plus. So I mean, it's whatever. Though. Yeah. We just need to have a Bass Pro open like closer to us, which won't happen because there's one like 45 minutes away. But or just a better store than Bass Pro and Cabela's. Just start our own store and call it Slobber Knocker. (laughs) We're gonna be talking about that. Which that one, uh, we'll just run right into that because Missile Baits they just released a chunky D bomb. It's a D bomb that's fatter. It's cool. I love the D bomb, man. I know you do. That's good baits. That's why I put it on there. Like I don't and even throw the D bomb, and you're gross. Uh, they smell like orange, like licorice. They smell weird. weird. I'll give you that. But Berkeley actually won two best in shows this year um, for new product showcase. The uh, they won freshwater soft lure and freshwater hard lure. Huh. Which they won it with the I thought Berkeley uh, slobber knocker. Oh, never mind. You're right. Uh, yeah, they won best freshwater salt. Yeah, I was I was thinking of salt water. Never mind. Oh no, Z Man won that. Yeah, with the little crab thing, which I'm going to use out in the river. That's going to hammer. I just feel like good. that's going to. I think it's going to do some work. Um, but the slobber knocker, which is their rendition of a chatterbait or bladed bait, um, kind of innovative to where the 
blade goes through the head completely. <clears throat> so a little bit different design. I know, I know a lot of people were kind of upset that they won. They're like, oh, there's no innovation in the bait industry anymore. This is stupid. They're just yeah. imitating Z-Man now. I read that too. The only thing I can think of, and granted, I haven't had it in my hand, but I watched a couple of YouTube videos and creators that were down there because all your YouTube guys go. They get into iCast so they can mm-hmm. see the new stuff. At least your bigger guys do. Um, and the way the blade articulates, it can, I guess it can go back farther. So it creates a harder thump, mm-hmm. which I'd have to see it and fish with it. Um, at the end of the day, I'm sure it will fish just like the Chatterbait will and the Picasso will and the Thunder Cricket will. They all had the same concept, more or less. Um, this yeah. is just designed a little different. What I do really like is the Power Stinger, the Berkeley Power Stinger. I didn't I'm see a- that. What is it? So, let- so it's this. I will share my screen again Hmm. so it was designed to be a slobber knocker trailer um but i'm a fan of it because i've seen it in action underwater on again a youtube video and it looks awesome like yeah it's like their version of like a uh razor shad you know how it's like slotted on the back tail this yep. has like indentations, it looks like, like diamonds. Yeah, it's not even really almost slotted because it's almost just on the top and the bottom to where so it, it probably has, has that tight little, what, oh, tight little uh, shake on the end. Or the yeah, shake. Wobble. Yeah, I mean, that, that tail moves like it goes. And it's, I think that would be like they, Berkeley goes out of their way to make everything look like super lifelike. Yeah. I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying on a reaction bait, like a chatter bait or a slobber knocker or something, it doesn't matter. Because the fish is, I mean, it, it's reacting to the bait. Yeah. Now, the tail, like tail movement, that matters, in my opinion. That matters. How it darts through the water matters. But it having an eye and all that stuff, I don't think that matters. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, I catch fish on caffeine shads. And that's I just, mean, you could uh, throw that on a swim bait, too, or a swim bait hook, too. and Exactly. So, I think it's, and the tail, the way the tail moves, it moves awesome. So, I... I'm a fan of this. Um, I think they did good there. Uh, I'm excited to get to one thing on the list because I think I, I have my own opinions about it and I'm excited to talk about it. Um, but yeah, I like that. I think that deserved, you know, it's it's not necessarily innovation, I guess, but how it's designed, how it swims is different than what else is on the market. So I'm a fan of that winning, you know, uh, award. The slobber yeah. knocker, I, I do agree. It's it's a new version of the same bait that's been out for years. It's just how it is, which yeah. is, I mean, I, I said that when we did our show about it, when we did the teaser, when everyone was talking about it and I made my super inappropriate joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's still funny though. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, I mean, it's, they could have chosen a better name, but whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna heart rough. the guy up too much for it. Um, but yeah, I like that. Berkeley brought something new to the table they haven't brought out. Um, Luz is another company kind of like Shimano. They didn't change a whole lot. Uh, yeah, I didn't hear much was, from them at all. So they had, I saw three things. They're bringing out a new light series of rods, which the light series from Luz isn't bad. I've had them. They work well. They're sensitive enough for their price point. Um the American Hero series from Luz has always been like the entry level or the combo rods and reels. Is that the camo camo looking? They were camo. They were blue and black one year. They were camo one year. Um, they've always like the reels have always been like fifty nine ninety nine, and the combos yeah. are like eighty nine or ninety bucks. Yeah. Um, they're bringing out the Tier One series, which is a tournament level American Hero series, which. I mean, they're they're taking the American Hero. I think they're still going to have your base American Hero. Then you're going to have your Tier 1, which is the tournament stuff. It's still going to be a, a lower price point than your Team Series and, you know, the Elite TIs and all that one whatnot. Um, but kind of like Shimano, I don't really think they really jumped into it big with any major splash. Like, they were just there. They're refreshing a couple things, and then... Yep. You know, they're just refreshing a line series and a new real era. The real, you know, it's not a bad thing. Improving on what you have is not bad. 
Yeah, I mean, that. redesigning some, like maybe the old one had an issue and they re- redesigned it to fix that issue. Who knows? Or maybe technology from a three hundred dollar reel is now more mass produced and they can put it in a hundred and ten dollar reel, kind of like the yeah. Shimano Maravel. Like the CI four body was only found in two hundred dollar plus reels. Now it's in a hundred and forty dollar reel. So innovation is never a bad thing for consumers because that means when something new comes out, what was there is now cheaper, which is cool. Um, but like Abu brought out a new rocket. Cool. I mean, the rockets, it's, it's the rocket at the end of the day. Um, but that's cool. Uh, we kind of talked about, unless you, do you, is anything you want to touch on for lose? I know you said you didn't really hear about them. No, I didn't really hear much about it. So I didn't really pay attention. Yeah. So Z man, we talked about that. How surprised were you once you saw what the Hellraiser <laughs> was? I was super surprised, man. I mean, I was not expecting like a top water plug with a chatterbait on the tail. <laughs> no, dude. That's, I remember when I first saw it, I sent you a picture of it. I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like somebody sat like in their freaking office and was just like, "Hey, let's put this here. Let's put this here." Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, I when we were talking about it, I was like, in my head, I was thinking it's a wake bait chatterbait. I don't know how they're gonna make it, but that's yeah. what I thought it would be. Uh, but in the test pond, they uh, the test oh. pond they they were slamming the fish on it. Like I they did were. I see that. Dang it. They were catching fish on it. it. It the action was great. It was a ton of top water action. It's like right below the surface, mm-hmm. or you can stop it and walk it, and it will walk like a plug. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean it's it's. I'm pumped to try one, mostly just because how weird it looks. Because like you said, it sounds like some dude who was waiting to get off work to go fish was like, I'm gonna put these two baits together and see what happens. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Like it's a plug I'm, with a chatter bait. I'm interested in trying one out. I, I hope it comes in smaller sizes. It looks like it's pretty big. Yeah, I would say it looks like it's at least a minimum of five inches for the plug yeah. itself. And then you have probably another half inch or an inch for the actual blade. Yeah. Um but yeah, I'm pumped to I'm pumped to see that. Um the let's see. Can you burn it across the surface? You can, from what I saw, because that's how guys were they were just burning it. So it, it, it to me it like it does three things. You can walk it like a prop. No, two things walk it like a prop or you can burn it and it's not across the surface it's like right below the surface like you're oh, still okay. getting awake but the way it sits is like the tail end where the chatterbait's out it's a little lower when yeah. you burn it so it's 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 moving water on the surface so you're still going to get those top water bites but it's not your traditional whopper plopper which sits on the surface of the water yeah. itself so you. but i'm pumped to try it because that's it's new i mean it's yeah. when i first saw it i was talking to a buddy and i was like yeah i I mean, that's, I don't understand. Like, why did it, was it designed that way? He's like, dude, when's the last time you can think of a top water bait being different? Yeah. Like, yeah that's a good point. Cause you have Whopper wake plopper. baits or all this. <clears throat> the Whopper plopper was the last, and I even said that. I was like, last time I can think of it was the plopper. He's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't think of anything else in the last couple of years that has been so changed, like a different style of bait. That's what they did. So, I mean, I hope I like it. I really do. Cause it looks cool now that I've actually like looked at it and watched people catch fish with it. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that would be cool. Yeah, um, I agree, man. Let's see. They brought out a ton of crappie stuff. Z Man starting to get in the crappie game. A lot of tiny mm-hmm. little small baits. I'm not um, surprised. Those will be killer. Yeah. I mean, crappie are known for destroying baits. So if you have yep. a, a last tech that lasts forever, like those will, no one's going to fish anything else. Bobby oh, Garland's, yeah. you're gone. I was going to say, oh, Bobby Garland's are gone. The little tiny like- tubes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are Gone. those like one inch tubes or something stupid? They're not, I, yeah, they're, I think the max is a one inch tube. Like the bobbies are done, and you know, you'd be dumb not to. You'd be dumb not to crappie fish and pan fish with baits that are going to last you 10 fish a piece. Mm-hmm. So, um, as someone who has 47 Plano boxes, uh, I'm pumped for the new Plano frog box. That one was interesting. I mean, um, they can, they hang from like these bars on the top, right? You can, yeah, you they hang from the bars on top, and you get sixty frogs in a box. Holy crap! I, I didn't know, realize there's that many. Yeah, I'm gonna show you a picture. It's awesome. That's crazy. So they have. Let's see. It looks is... like a. It looks like the size of their spinnerbait box. So I figured you could fit maybe ten frogs. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this to work. 
I don't know. It's like my trackpad's not working very well. Shut up. Max. What was the uh we have the F FXR Pro Fish on our list too? I don't know what that was. The FXR, I'll hit on that after this. Look look at this box. This is insane. Yeah, that's pretty cool. One, two, three, four, five. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty. And I think there's another one back there. So 60 frogs in a box. That's That's insane. Oh, so they hang on both sides of the bar. I see. Yeah. And people who kayak fish, who don't have big boats that have four frog boxes, you can take every frog you own out with you on the water Mm -hmm. and change a color every three casts and probably still not get through all of them because you have 60 frogs in a box. If you have 60 frogs, man, you're... I don't know. I feel like... I feel like you're doing it wrong if you have that many. <laughs> I mean, I have like three boxes of frogs. And then I realized like two years ago, like most of my frogs are old. And now I just buy frogs that are black or white. Yeah. The, o- the, like, the only part that matters on a frog is the belly. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I've, I've learned that uh, a little bit late, um, but I have a ton of frogs, but yeah, I just think that's dope because people like, you know, it, they, they like different colored frogs. That's great. This box will hold all of them which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They came out with a small, a 3,600 style jig box, like my big jig boxes where you put the heads in there and it holds them all together. Oh, which that's is, nice. I love that. Cause that's going to be a new river box for me. Cause I have a box full of jigs. So now like I can finesse, just take both finesse, jigs fin- in it. finesse jigs. And then I have like, I, I buy double of color for chatter or uh, jackhammers that I use and I like. So those are in that box. Now I can, instead of just being a little spots, you know, it works out. Um, so I'm pumped for that. The FXR Pro Fish, I was intrigued by that. So that is a, it's not a bait. It is, I know it says Pro Fish, but it's not a bait at all. It's actually a rain suit that floats. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Which is, like, I saw that, and they had a mannequin fully in it, and they had, uh, I, they did something to the mannequin to make it, like, normal weight, and it just floats. So if somebody and falls in, they, they're going to float. It, yeah. So it's like a big old, like, life vest. Pretty much, yeah. Which I just thought, you know, it's not. I didn't even want to really touch on it for very long. I just thought, hey, that's cool, you know. Yeah. Especially for your guys who are in, you know, you can think of it from a big boats, you know, thing. Hey, you fall in an eerie, you're probably going to die anyway. But at least you get to live long enough to see yourself die. And then <laughs> if you're if you're in a kayak, uh, it's just another thing that could help you if you do fall because it happens. I mean, what Thursday we just ask just by the place. Well, ask Cam because he lost all his crap and he had one of those self-inflating kayak or those vests, the Mustangs, which are really expensive to replace. That sucks to be him. But yeah, it exploded on his neck. But on Thursday, when we went out, we portaged, <laughs> we portaged around uh, some oh, a, little, a little riffle that was real shallow and we portaged around it. And then you kept you just went right away. I was fishing a bank a little bit. And then I went to get in my kayak and I was bouncing on a rock and the rock said not today and moved. And I went completely underwater, got sucked back to the riffle, and my boat was on top of me. Like, almost died. Brad had no idea. For the viewers out there, Brad was just fishing on the other side of the river. He didn't even care. Didn't care. I mean, I went down. I made a... And then went down, and I was gone. And the only thing I can think of, I was like, thank God I'm wearing a PFD, because it brought me back up real quick. NRS Chinook. Shout out for saving my life. Uh, But yeah, I mean, if you're on a bigger body of water and you do flip your kayak like Cam, at dale hollow in a four foot creek stupid uh it'll get you back up which is cool it's just another form of you know not saying i don't know how floaty it does i didn't look at it too much if yeah. it completely replaces a life jacket that's cool i doubt it will but if it does yeah, that'd be i cool. doubt it yeah um but yeah i just wanted to hit that for two seconds if you're looking for stuff fx is out there uh, one thing I'm, su- did you see the Guggen dangerous swim bait or the Bass Mafia dangerous swim bait? You mean the mag draft imitator? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Oh my God. It's getting so much it's hate. Same and I, thing. Love I love it, dude, because it's the same. You talk about the slobber knocker, at least like it's something different. It's the same for at least bait. color yeah. of the eye or something. I mean something, dude. Oh, I hate it so much. And it's gonna sell. You know why it's gonna sell? Because it's probably gonna be cheaper than a mag draft. Yeah, and Chris Alden is pushing it. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not 
I'm not gonna say anything about that, but uh, it's I, 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 it, it's stupid because there's no innovation at all. Like as yeah, someone, I mean, follows, it's like a stick bait. I mean, there's only so much you can do. Exactly. Like, and but the the thing with like that style bait, if you made that like a mag draft style in a bluegill, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyone who does like you have Berkeley, which Berkeley copied a Japanese company for the the gilly. The only reason I, I have so many gillies, they did. They it's uh the gill, uh, oh, who what company makes it? I, I fished them for a little bit and then it was just, it got hard to get them because they were always out of stock and you had to wait like two weeks to get them from Japan mm-hmm. and hook up, never had them in stock. That's why I like the Gilly so much, but the Gilly is a, is a blatant knockoff of a Japanese bait blatant knockoff. Um, but the difference is you couldn't get it here because it's not sold here. Yeah. I could go to field and stream and have my choice of 30 mag drafts. So, I don't know that it bugs me so much because they, if they would have made that in a bluegill style or even a shad style, it would have been perfect. There's companies out there who make them, but they're small. They're like, you know, the citizen to where if someone made a bait like this from somewhere that was kind of close to it, no one would be that upset because you have to wait like three months to get these. Yeah. Um, but man, that's stupid. Uh, I hate that. That's a definite big fat thumbs down from me i'll never fish them unless they're super cheap i can't get a mag graph um guggen came out with new reels did you see that nope i didn't see any other stuff yep they brought out new reels the golden green series reels i don't know price points they look nice i mean they look like they're decent build quality um the the the, my only gripe with guggen because i have a bunch of their crap back here my only gripe with guggen their soft plastic baits are great and they're coming out. They come out with a new tube. The tube looks pretty dope. I'm kind of excited for the tube, hmm. but I'm afraid when they brought out re- rods, their rods are poo. I've used them. I don't like them. Some people do. I don't like them. Um, people only like them because they like the people that run the company. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm fi- like that doesn't bother me. Like, if you're buying it because you like you you watched them growing up on YouTube or something, then that's fine. Whatever. I don't like their rods I, as a starter rod. Sure, I think they'd be fine. Uh, their plastics, I'm not. I don't hate their plastics. I think some of them are blatant knockoffs, but they're a little bit. They're different enough to where I don't care. Their reels, I'm afraid they're doing what we talked about with Bonafide. They're spread themselves so thin now. Yeah. That quality is gonna suffer. Their reels aren't gonna be great because they make rods in 47,000 different plastics and they're trying to get into every avenue of the industry. And I think they're going to spread themselves too thin. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents on the Guggen fun crap. I, I, I like their plastics. I mean, I only have a couple bags of them, but they feel nice. They look nice and they smell yeah. good. And, and yeah, they smell good. <laughs> you, you're you're the only guy I know that will also uh, open a bag of power bait and just like inhale it. I've done that before, and then I had Allie do it. She was like, "What is that?" About threw up. <laughs> I've I've done it and held it in. And I had Stacy do it, and she was like, "That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard of in my life." Or smelled. I was life. like, "Oh, that smells great." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one thing. I, another thing I'm kind of excited about, which I showed a buddy, and he was also became excited about them. I don't know. Have you ever heard of J3 fishing? I might have. I might have heard it. Like I don't know. I I, I heard of them like in passing, but I've never actually like no, looked I at their stuff or anything. I'm thinking of Big Joshy. Yeah, no, I've heard of Big Joshy. Um, but J3 fishing, I was watching it. It just popped up on the YouTube. Like you let a video go through and I was watching a video of iCast and I got sidetracked by my phone and it just started playing another video and these popped up. So these J3 fishing has made to the J3 cross modular spinnerbait system. What is that? Which is, which is cool for two reasons. One reason this is kind of innovative. This is different. I haven't seen it before. But basically what it is, you buy, you can buy, uh, whether you're buying uh, a Willow Bay blade, Colorado blade or whatnot, all the heads have holes in them. Dude, that makes me mad. 
I thought about that like a few years ago. I'm like, that'd be sweet to be able to interchange like heads and skirts. Yep. So literally what you're doing is with J3 fishing is taking whatever blade you want, whether it's a big willow, small Colorado, big Colorado, small willow. And then you can change the jigs. You can make, if let's say you just like, throwing big blade colorados you buy mm -hmm. two of those and then you buy six colors of jigs you like and you put it all in one box and now you have six spinner baits in a box yeah that's cool i thought about that I, though before i'm like yeah that'd be kind of cool there you so go there's your black colorado <laughs> i love it it's your, i know it's your favorite big black colorado too oh well, i like uh, the chartreuse one too which you thought was weird throwing chartreuse in mud water but I it did, works. and it works. It works great, so I'm not even gonna be upset about it. Um, the only thing I don't like is the cost. It's seven dollars and forty four cents for every jig head for the pivot bodies. Mm. Um, which, if you look at it, because you can buy one of these. If you buy, let's say you buy one of the, like this one and that one, you're looking at what twelve ninety or twelve eighty for two of those, and then. A couple heads are 744. Good spinner baits. Now I like war eagles. I know you like war eagles. Yep. They're like four dollar fifty cents. But some people who like I like my or er, mega bass spinner baits, those are thirteen dollars a pop. So <laughs> price point, I can see it. Uh and I guess I don't know if you could use these modular bodies as like the pivot bodies as jigs too. That would be dope because then it's a multi purpose and you have if you have eight jigs in your box, you have also eight spinner baits in your box. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was cool, especially from a company I've never heard of. Uh, yeah, that is you never cool. heard of. And it's something different. Like somebody's making something to where I'm sure I think, I mean, if more people knew about it, I think that would blow up. People would buy the crap out of that. Right. Yeah. No, that is cool. Uh, so one thing you put on there, I didn't see it. Oh, the, the new sea tug. tug? Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, so it, it's just like a brand new redesign thing. Instead of having like the little, here we go, the little slats like that that fit mm -hmm. like the keel of a kayak, they put bars like he like the oh. um, like the wilderness systems cart, and those bars you can move them in in and out to fit multiple kayak. Uh, holes and stuff so i thought that was cool it's one of the things that a lot of people had gripes with the sea tug uh was not fitting holes and stuff and not being able to adjust i thought that was kind of cool that they redesigned it yeah i mean that is cool especially with i mean you're looking at catch brought out a brand new um their brand new cart yeah. which is crazy um wilderness systems and then you have the suspense car sea tugs have been there i think yep. that's cool that they're they're changing it to where like you said i know some kayaks couldn't even fit on the sea cut sea tug so giving you the yeah. ability to press them out and i think the wilderness systems like my cart with the p127 which we had a pain in the butt time trying to that's mostly because of me because i'm an idiot but uh i think if those could move out and press against the hole a little bit i think it would hold better yeah so I think that's a good idea. Like, I, I want to look at that a little bit more. Uh, I've used the Sea Tug, like the old version. I didn't like the thing, just because I don't know. It just wasn't very well thought out. Yeah, but again, like we said, innovation is or not innovation, but refreshing a product is good because they maybe they realized that it wasn't good and then they changed it. And now it's going to be better. So it's and a win-win. You mentioned uh, catch, man. They're changing the game with the cart too. So I, I think yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people saw that and they're like, all right, we got to do something different. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, that they didn't bring out something with Catch bringing a new cart that the Wilderness cart didn't change. Yeah, I don't uh, think they really gonna... need to change it, though. That I think that's the best cart, in my opinion. But I've never used the suspense cart, so... Can't really yeah, that. neither have I. I know in a lot of the groups that I'm part of, everyone always recommends the suspense cart. I never used it. Um, so... I mean, it is what it is. Um, a couple other things I'll just hit on real quick. And these are super quick. Jackal is bringing out a couple of JDM baits to the U.S., which is the uh, uh, the T TN80 lipless, which is a lipless crankbait. They're bringing that over to the U.S., which is a, or a lipless uh, 
yeah, lipless crankbait. That's a fantastic lipless bait. It pulls through cover really nice. It has a real tight motion, or you can tie it to a uh, a front tie or a back tie, excuse me, for more of a prey style, predator style motion where it's pointed down, which is cool. Um, the V crawl swim jig. I'm a big fan of the V crawl swim jig. I've been ordering from Japan for a while. Those are coming to the U S which hmm. is awesome. Uh, kind of like we talked about earlier. I'm never going to see them in any store ever, which s- sucks, but yeah. those swim jigs are legit. Um, really nice colors, well thought out bodies, like of the size of the skirt. You don't have to trim them as much because it's about the perfect size to cover the shank, of the hook and not the, you know, whole bait and everything. They're not overly long or overly short, which is nice. Um, Let's see if there's anything that we one thing I wanted to hit on is not on our list, but I saw it when I started doing the looked at the new product showcase. The uh fray bill net. Oh, that was on the list. I added it. Well, it must, I'm not seeing it. Got deleted. I forgot about it. yeah, that net is interesting. So what's so cool about the net? it looks just like a standard net. Like it doesn't look like if you're just looking at it at a side glance, you'd be like, okay, I don't know why anybody's excited about the net. So standard net, it has a built in, uh, scale right there, which is crazy because it's something us as anglers, we've always thought about, but -hmm. nobody's ever done it. (laughs) Yeah. Which I mean, it's, it's, it's a really big net. Like I saw it in person. It's a long net. So, I still think from a kayak perspective, I'm sure someone's going to do it. Uh, it. It To me, I feel like it'd be too long for me. Maybe I just need to get it in my hand. Um, yeah. But that's it's, it's, it's cool. So it has a place where you can measure your fish on the handle, which if you don't have a catch board or you don't want to bring it with you and you just want to bring your net, you can do that. So you can get your measurement. Then you can put it in the net, get your weight, and then you can release their fish. Their big thing with this is conservation for this net. And they, you know, they're pushing, get your measurement, get your weight, get the fish back in the water and let it, you know, stay healthy, which I'm all about. I'll back that hundred um, percent. I hate having a fish out of water for longer than I need to, because then, you know, I mean, it's happened. Most anglers have had it happen. You've had a fish out, especially bigger fish. You're excited. You put it back in. It just wants to belly up and float and you feel like you killed the fish and then you luck out and it swims away like happened on Thursday which I don't know why that happened. I think he was just tired because I have, I had kept that fish in the water forever, but he acted weird and then he swam away and I was worried I killed the fish. Um, so I'm all about back in, you know, everything that they're pushing with this product. Um, I believe I haven't seen the final MSRP, but I believe is expensive, like 140 bucks is. for the net, yeah. which is a lot for a net. Uh, <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't know I agree. what else to say other than it's just a lot for a net. Um, but I like it. I think it, it it is innovative. We haven't seen it. And like you said, we've talked about yeah. it before, but haven't seen it before. Um, well, I'm going to have reach out to them. We're going to have them on the show too. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. Have them on. I was super pumped to see Bahio win an award oh yeah me too man no that was yeah, cool they, they won best eye eyewear so that came out perfect with our last show so i'm about that they they uh, launched last year at icast and they won award this year at icast that's pretty yeah, cool for best sunglasses which were the rokas which i like the rokas rokas looks dope um i was actually going to run through these uh be, uh show show awards and stuff yeah if, uh if you want to stop and talk about something real quick, we can. But I was going to run through them real quick. Yeah, I'm about it. All right. Uh, let's see. Best of show winner, backpack, or a pack back P88 MK combo. I think it's a backpack and a cooler. So I don't really, I didn't really look at it much. Novelties and wellness, the Garmin Quadic 7 smartwatch, but uh, boating accessories. Uh, Pure Fishing, Frable Recharge, Deluxe Aerator. Uh, Boats and Watercraft, Boat, Rackham, Gator Shell. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Kind of surprised that uh, Airship didn't get that category. Yeah, I am too. Um, But, I don't know. Maybe the Apex Paddle Drive is better than what we were talking about earlier. I think, I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, it might be. It would be awesome to see it in person. 
Um, continue. Uh, footwear, Aftco ankle deck boots, ice fishing. You got Garmin Live Scope Plus, ice fishing bundle LI. Eyewear, you got Bahio sunglasses. Lifestyle apparel for women, Aftco. It seems like they're always on top. For when it comes to apparel, dude, Aftco yeah. is like where it's at. Like, I don't think I found anything other than like my Sim stuff. I love my Sim stuff. And it's cheaper in Aftco, so I'm about it. Yeah. Uh, lifestyle pair for men, Aftco again. They're Coco Boardies, board shorts. Yep. And then uh, warm weather technical apparel, Sims Fishing, the Solar Flex Guide Cooling Hoodie. Yep. Cold weather technical apparel, Aftco again, Barricade Rain Suit, Acid Camo Colorway. That looks uh, sick. Soft and hard coolers, Pack Back, one again. Electronics, um, Johnson Outdoors, Marine Electronics, Mega Live Imaging, Target Live. I will stop and talk about that. So what that is, is this last season, the end of last season, Hummingbird and Lawrence came out with Active Target and then uh, <clears throat> Hummingbirds. What's that Hummingbirds called? Uh, yeah. Their live target system. But basically what this does is crazy is you can have it spot lock on an area. So let's say you want to fish this structure you can move around it and the head will move with you to keep spotted on that area. Yeah, that's cool. Like that's all. I know a lot of guys are ditching Garmin completely for that system. Yep. I so, think a uh, hurl boss is getting. Yeah. It too. Yeah. He was talking about it too, which I mean, that's, that's kind of a game changer when it comes to electronics. So that's cool. Next category. We got the uh, cut. I don't know, even know how to say that word. Cut cutlery. Cutlery. Cutlery hand pliers or tools. Yeah. Bubba Saltwater Multi Flex Filet Knife, which that would be perfect. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) I'm going to drown you in the river. Fishing accessory. We just talked about it. The Fraybill Witness Way Net. Uh, Kids kids Tackle Sims Fishing Products. Kids Tributary Waders. Tackle Management. The Plano Frog Box. Um, I'm telling you, terminal tackle, yeah, terminal tackle Z Man, which not a big s- surprise there. The diesel IJ heads, those are sweet. Yep. Yeah. Custom tackle components, uh, mud hole custom tackle RBS Pro G2 power wrapper. So I'm guessing that's to wrap your rods. I'm Tile. assuming, yeah, it's for to to wrap cork and stuff around the rods. Yeah, interesting. This is what surprised me. Fishing line, pure fishing spider wire dura braid. Spider wire, like I've used it before. That stuff sucks. Someone's uh, grease in the pockets because <laughs> that stuff <laughs> is. I I hate spider wire. I hate yeah, it. I, I think too. it's terrible. It it always leaves my fingers green if I'm using yep. green, or it bleeds really bad. It, it the tensile strength is poo. It, it's poo. I don't yeah. agree with the committee's decision. Well, I mean, people people vote on these. So I don't care that they voted wrong. Yeah, I don't know. It, it is kind of weird. I saw that. I was like, eh. Uh, fr- yeah, freshwater softwater lure, Berkeley Power Base Power Stinger. Yep. And then you hard lure. They won that too with the slobber knocker. And then you got yeah. saltwater so- soft lure, Z Man Kicker Crabs, softwater hard lure, uh, la- live target, live shrimp. That looks pretty cool. I think they w- they win the hard lure every year for saltwater because their live target makes so, like I was talking about. Berkeley it's like intricate make, looking. The, Berkeley likes to make everything look lifelike. Yeah, live target makes everything like it looks like it was taxidermied. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I've thrown some of their like their frogs look like real frogs. Yeah, for whatever stupid reason, like a holly body frog. I wonder we're gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna buy us some of those, and we're gonna fish with them on the river and see what happens. I guarantee you they'd work. Mm. But uh, let's see. Next category: fly fishing rod. I'm kind of bummed that Douglas didn't win this, man. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking when I saw Bull Bay. I was like, well, I mean, I don't know anything about fly fishing, so maybe they're awesome. But the the quality of just with the freshwater cat like traditional rods from douglas i can't imagine i mean they're known in the industry as some of the best fly fishing rods you can buy yeah sky sky g is one of the it's an award-winning fly rod so i'm yeah I'm it's, kinda... it's a 
award-winning premier fly rod like it's yeah. if i ever buy a fly rod i'm just gonna buy that because i never have to buy another one the rest of my life like it's yeah. the best fly i kind of want one buy. too i don't have the patience for fly fishing i've tried it doesn't work I don't either, man i don't either <laughs> freshwater rod no surprise here st croix legend tournament bass rod do you know why they want it this year no so if you look at that picture because you're on the same side i am uh -huh. if you look at that picture it's got a like a, a pistol grip on it that's weird. So I thought that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen until I heard the guy from St. Croix talking about it. It's for bigger baits. So you're not moving your wrist as much because throwing big baits, like as someone who throws big swim baits, like I get tired of throwing them because you're throwing huge swim baits. Your wrists are breaking off when you're doing it. So you grab it there and you can completely cast with a solid arm. Huh. And it takes out a lot of the, the like tiredness from it. Now this is on some of their bigger rods or swim bait rods or a rig rods, stuff like that. But that's as stupid as it looks. It does look weird. <laughs> it looks dumb to me, but it does the job. And it, it from everything they explained, I can see why it makes sense to have it on bigger rods. Um, <laughs> and they redid their blanks this last year, so I'm not surprised that they want it. Yeah. Uh, next category, saltwater rod. Pure fishing, the ugly stick carbon rod, inshore rod. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you're... you're on record saying you like the carbon rods so i mean maybe it, they, they feel nice they're just heavy that's yeah, ugly stick so not surprised yeah rod and reel combo combo shimano sphero sw combo i can see that i mean when it comes to saltwater combos i can definitely see that i'm surprised they didn't win saltwater rod but i guess that's what sw stands for saltwater combo yep. Fly reel and fly fishing accessories. You got pure fishing, the hardy for, fortuna regent, 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 uh, saltwater fly reel, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, freshwater reel, you got the Shimano Stella FK. And uh, saltwater reel, you got the Pen Authority spinning reel. Yeah, neither of those, the freshwater reel, the Stella winning, definitely see that coming. And then the pin authority spinning reel i saw that coming pin is known for saltwater stuff um, yeah unless you get to the real high end stuff and then they're still known they just you know pin pin lives in salt so yeah it, it, anytime you see pin on the river or something it, it's for cat fishermen or whatever yeah because it's a giant saltwater reel yeah so well man that that's all we got for the award i think that's all we got for the episode but yeah, I was about to say, we touched on everything we wanted to, plus all the awards. Um, it's been a longer episode, I know, but we had a lot to talk about. It was oh, cool. yeah. And I'm excited because we had some paddle and thing guys down there. They got us got set up with some uh, companies that we're going to be talking about, so I'm pumped for that. Mm -hmm. um, we got a couple of really good shows coming on. I know we're going to have Z-Man on here soon. Bonafide is going to be on here. Um, I'm going to try to get someone on here to talk about the airship. I'm pumped about that. Um, yeah, I know. I know who we could reach out to for that. Mm -hmm. I'm probably thinking of the same person. So, but, but yeah, I mean, longer episode, like Brad said, but we appreciate you if you've if you've hung in. A lot of good stuff came out this year. I would say if I had to give iCast 2022 a rating, I'd say it's a solid seven out of ten. Um, not a ton of innovation, like you've seen years past, like a bunch of new stuff coming out, but. There was enough new stuff to where it kept me interested. There's been some years that I cast where it's like, oh, yeah, we changed the color of this rod from black to blue. And yeah. that's like, that changed. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's stupid. Did that but, with kayaks a couple years ago. <laughs> there was a couple companies. Yeah, like, yeah that just came out. New kayak. Oh, it's just yeah. new color. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, whatever. But, yeah, there's some great stuff coming out. Um, the kayak scene was getting a lot more view or looks at i cast i know there's some uh content creators that do nothing but bass boats were actually stopping and talking about kayaks and a lot of bigger companies are starting to build things toward kayaks so i'm pumped that's cool um yeah i'm excited i think this is a, a push in the right direction for the fishing industry so yeah <laughs> all right man it's been fun it's been real but it hasn't been real fun so no, I'm just joking. It's been real fun. I mean, you can say that. I'm gonna. I'm still gonna drown you in the river for your fillet knife comment. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, I was almost tempted to flay that 18 and a half you caught. I would have killed you. You wouldn't. Have I was made like, it out of there. dude, that has some juice, juicy meat on that thing. Give me that some. was such a fat fish, dude. It was so big. Was. I oh, dude, and I had it. It was the worst hook set too. That would like. I wasn't paying attention. I threw it to the grass thing, and I was like, "All right, cool." I looked at my phone for a second, and then I looked up, and my line was moving. And I was like, "Oh, it's just the current." So I pull, and there's some weight, but then it pop, like the blade starts moving. And I was like, "Oh, yeah, it was just the current." I was behind a rock. And then it just immediately stopped in the current and didn't move at all. And I was like, <laughs> set the hook. And I set the hook and it, I got it to the boat. I was trying to fight to get my net because I don't have my extension on, which you lost your net. We need to go find that. Uh, yeah. Justin went out there. He said he didn't see it. Ah, oh, it sucks. Yeah. The good thing it's only like 40 bucks. It's not like the end of the world. Yeah. Um, it's not a frame, but witness that's $140. <laughs> uh, but, but I didn't have my extensions. So I was fighting with my net and then I got it in there and I had it hooked on the outside of the fish's cheek. Like it, it, it didn't, it didn't want to come off and I tried to unhook it. So I guess it was, I mean, it was a good spot, but yeah, man, it was, it was, if that would have got stuck on something, I would have just cried. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Peace. See you later. I will spend your money in one place. <laughs>